Good morning, everyone. Uh, Daily Bible reading, Genesis chapter 31. Now, Genesis chapter 31, what are we to make of Laban? Yesterday we saw um, Jacob, who had been in Laban's house for, what, 20 years or so. He had acquired two principal wives, Leah and Rachel, two uh, minor wives, uh, Bilhah and Zilpah. He had acquired children, sons, and yet we see him um, deceiving, or meaning to deceive his uncle Laban into, into giving him a huge quantity of wealth in the form of animals. Uh, it's revealed in Genesis 31 that the reason for the birth of lots of striped and spotted and ring-streaked animals which Jacob could bring with him was not due to the ruse that's described of exposing them to the sight of things that were stripy or streaky uh, and imagining that that made them bring forth, made them give birth to um, streaky or stripy animals. It is acknowledged here in Genesis 31 that it was actually a miraculous intervention by God. Laban has, Laban has changed his mind several times apparently according to this scripture about letting Jacob go with all his uh, all his animals and we see that Laban is very ticked off at the idea that Jacob's going to make off with all this large proportion of his wealth even though his house has been blessed by Jacob's presence and um, and the riches the wealth that he possesses is much more than he would otherwise have even after Jacob goes also, Laban's sons, understandably enough, are extremely annoyed that what they imagined would or someday be theirs is now going to be uh, carried off by Jacob. So he brings his wives, he brings, um, he brings Rachel and Leah together and he tells them of his plan to leave quietly and secretly so that uh, Laban will not be able to prevent him from going. And this is what he does. He heads off into the desert. Three days later, Laban chases after him with murder in his heart, apparently, but is told by God not to hurt Jacob. And they eventually part on reasonably good terms. Familial harmony is restored into what it had been before this uh, breach. Interesting to see the way in which Rachel steals uh, Laban's household images, things that Laban later explicitly refers to as his gods. Now, people who people who are expert in Hebrew, I am not a Hebrew scholar, I can deal with Greek, but can't deal with Hebrew. Hebrew scholars tell me that the word that Laban uses means that they were not worshipped as gods, but they were venerated, um, venerated in order to concentrate the mind of the worshipper on the god but all the same these are idols and it's clear that both laban's house and because rachel took these things in order to use them herself uh, jacob's house was polluted by the false worship of idols by the disobedient worship of idols now this does not mean that they were not worshippers of the one God. We know even today that people who we acknowledge as our brothers and sisters sometimes misuse images in just this way. Um, some, um, many in the Church of England, a few in the Church of Ireland, uh, people in Lutheran communions who we acknowledge as our brothers and sisters misuse idols in this way. So the pollution of idolatry in this, uh, in this context was wrong and bad like the misuse of the gift of marriage by multiple by marrying multiple wives but it wasn't fatal it does show however the way in which humanity had degenerated that even in the chosen family even in the chosen family of jacob there is a pollution of idolatry and of sin laban jewish people can't make their mind up about laban either he is uh, seen as being very positive in the Jewish wedding rituals. He's quoted and 
uh, quoted approvingly in Jewish wedding rituals. However, he is also quoted very disapprovingly and referred to very disapprovingly in their Passover rituals. Uh, and this is seen by Jewish tradition as being a sort of prototype of the Passover. I don't know whether those traditions are of very ancient uh, origin, but they may well be. And uh, it certainly mirrors the view that we have of Laban, whether to see him as one of the good guys or one of the bad guys. The consensus among the commentariat is that he was a Roman, but he was part of this family and he was spoken to by God and he did obey God and um, I think the whole sorry mess is an example of how we go wrong when we rely on our own understanding. Uh, and it also exemplifies God's wonderful and marvellous providence to his people because both Laban and more particularly, of course, uh, Jacob were blessed by enormous wealth. And God's promises to Jacob are made come true. God fulfills all his promises, uh, as we know he always does. Genesis 31, this is God's word. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's, hath he gotten all this glory? And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, unto thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served thy father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass, at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leapt upon the cattle were ring streaked, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring streaked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him as strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and waves upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle, and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Paddan Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face towards Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, what hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret and with harp? And hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesterday saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldst needst be gone because thou sore longedst after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said unto Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. 
with whomsoever thou findest my gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern, thou which is thine with me, I am taken to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tents, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Laban's, or Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord, that I cannot raise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Jacob was wroth, and chewed with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin, that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? See it here before my brethren, and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was, in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou had sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction, and the labour of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now, therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made an heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jagar Sahadatha, but Jacob called it Galead. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galead. And Mizpah, for he said, the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent from one another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. Amen.